Hey there, welcome back. This is part 8 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. If you'd like to check out my previous videos in this series, make sure to click on the link below in the description. So, in our previous video, we learned about what page object model is and why we should use it. In this video, we will convert our existing test and implement page object model pattern. So, let's get started. So, if you remember from our previous video, what we need to do first is create a pages folder. So, let's do that. So I've created a pages folder under the test directory. Now under the pages folder, we need to create our page base class. So let's do that. Oops, make sure to rename this page.js. Okay. Now we need to create a class here. So we can name it class page. And that's it. That's how we create a class in JavaScript. So inside this, we're going to keep it simple and the only thing we want this class page to have is ability to open a new page. So we will create a new method and name it open and inside that we will pass in a path and then we'll say browser dot URL and then just open that path. So all we're saying is if you remember in our test, we are if I go back to my test here, we do this browser.url. So we're just creating a method for this. So instead of saying browser.url every time, all we're gonna do is say, let's say our pages.open and then pass in the URL. And this open method we're gonna be using in our other pages class. Okay, so this is created. Now we need to export this class so that other classes can access this. So to do that, we can do export default. So by default, it's going to export this class out of this page.js file. So now we need to create our search page file. So if you remember here, we created all our search test and we have all our selectors created here. We're going to move all of these selectors inside the pages directory. So let's create our search pages file. We'll do that by just creating a new file, name it search.page.js. So just notice the file naming convention here. We are saying search, which was our spec file name, dot page dot js. This way we would note that this is a page file instead of a spec file. I'll hit enter. Okay. So same thing as the last time, we're gonna create a new class here. So I'll do class search page. And then over here. So this search page will inherit from our base page class. So we can inherit this by using the extend keyword. So we'll say extends and then just write page. One thing we need to make sure is import page in this file. So we can do that using our import statement. We'll say import page from, and this is in the same directory. So I'll do this. Okay. Now our search page will have access to all the methods that's gonna be inside this page class using the power of inheritance. Okay, so let's do this. First of all, we're going to create again our open class. But this time, instead of saying browser.url, what we will say is super. Super is basically us using the parent class functionality or the methods of the parent class. So when I add a dot here, you can see I have the open method that we created there. So I can do super.open and then pass in our path here, which could be HTTP slash slash dot dot dot, whatever it is. So for now, I'll just leave it this way. Now to give you example, it's not just this. We can add any method in here if that we want to reuse anywhere else. Let's say we have um, a method, I don't know, close, which just closes the browser. And then this will just close the browser. So if I go back here, I will have access when I do super dot and there you go now I have access to that close method so we can create as many as methods as we want in our base class and then reuse it in all of our classes using inheritance so i'm going to delete this save this here this two and then save it here so now let's import our selectors to our search page so if you go back to search you notice here we are using these two selectors so what I'm going to do is just copy this and then paste it here for our reference and then I'll just comment this out. Okay. So to use selectors in our search page class, if you remember from previous video, we need to use getter functions. 
So we can use getter functions by writing get and then same name there search input create a function and within our function we need to return our selector so I'm gonna do return and then just copy this piece here okay so that's all we need for our search page to know that this is a selector okay so we'll do the same thing for our next selector which is search button and then hit a function here return copy this thing paste it here there you go so now I can just safely remove this from here all right so now what we need to do is use these selectors in our search test so before we do that we need to export our search page class so we can do that by saying export default new search page so one thing to notice here we are exporting the instance of the class by using the new keyword so that's the key thing here make sure you add new search page and then the parentheses here all right now let's head back to our search class here I'm gonna import our search page I'll import search page from pages search page there you go so um, now that we are there the first thing we need to do is get rid of the search input and then I will do search page dot search input you see how when I let me remove this again so I'll do search page dot and I can see search input here as well as search button as well as open so everything that we created here and now have access in our spec file so I can do search page dot search input and then over here I can do add value so I'll do add value do laptop there you go and we were doing search button dot click so same way I can do search page dot search button dot click and now we also don't need these two lines okay now the last thing we need to do to get our test working is update the search input to search page dot input so I can do search page dot search input okay so everything else here will remain same so we changed our full line into just a two line code which is also really readable so if you notice all we're doing is search page dot search input add value do this and search page dot search button dot click so this is really easy to read and now all our selectors are residing here so that's great let's try to run our test to see if it works so we can do that so instead of me running the entire uh, spec file here the spec folder I will just run the search JS file so I can do that by going over here and then do search.js close that I'll do npx wdau run a configuration file and hit enter Okay, so our test ran and it successfully passed. So this is the one where we updated a change. So it ran and it worked fine. Awesome. Now let's take a look at which other test is using our selector. So if you see here, our last test, which is to update the search category, we are using the selector. So I will do the same thing, copy this, paste it here, and then create our new get function. I'll name it category. return and then return this entire thing okay and then remove this from here perfect let's go ahead and update this so we don't need this anymore can remove this change this to search page dot category okay so that's it now let's try to run this to see if this test will work Okay, so even this ran and it passed. Great. All right, so that's how easy it was to just convert our search spec file into a page object model pattern. So one thing we haven't done here yet is, if you notice, we're using browser.url, but we already created this browser.url over here. So instead of 
hard coding it here let's take advantage of our page file so we can do that by just copying this entire thing and paste it here and from a search I can just remove this and say search page dot open that's it I don't even need to pass in which path it is because by default when it will run it's gonna be passing in the path in our page file so let's make sure this works and quickly run our test again so our test ran and if you must if you would have noticed it opened up the ebay.com url and then all our remaining tests ran and it passed so that's it we can read our entire spec file here using page object model pattern now few things that we talked about is we removed all of our selectors into our search page so anytime there's an update that happens to that particular element instead of coming in here and let's imagine if this file was like hundreds of line we won't have to worry about now figuring out which test we have to update do a control f we can just come to our search page update our selectors to let's say if they do gh dash act or whatever we can just update it here and we will have a collection or repository of all our selectors over here same thing on our uh, method here if let's say the url changes to something else we can just make the change here instead of updating it over here so that's it that's how easy it was to convert our spec file into a page object model pad so we have one more spec file remaining which is our watches.js so we'll do the same implementation by creating our watches pages file and then converting all this into page object model pattern so let's do that so we'll create our watches page i'm going to do new file watches.page.js and then let's import our page so by the way there's nothing different here than what we are doing what we did in our search page so if you want you can even try this on your own and see if it works and then just compare the solution afterwards okay so i'm just going to create a new class call this watches page it will extend from our page base class right and quickly let's just do export default new watches page there you go now we'll move our selectors if i go to watches page so let's take a look we have this selector so i'm going to copy this paste it here and then create our getter function call that promo banner and i'll just do copy return paste this here and then i can remove this same thing we will do for our this test copy this paste you get info title return and paste this here okay I'm also going to create an open method which we did last time so I'll do super.open and then what are we using here we're using this link paste this here over here um, what else is remaining so we have one more left this one let's do that copy this get shop button then do return oh. so if you see there's a lot of like duplication we do kind of the same thing so there's not really too much of different coding that we are doing it's kind of the same thing we're implementing it multiple times for a different selector so let's head over to our watches page and then import our watches page we'll do import watches page from pages and then watches page okay then we can update this by just doing watches page dot open we don't need this anymore and we can call this watches page dot promo banner to be displayed we don't need this anymore either we'll do watches page dot info title same thing we can remove this it watches page dot 
chop button, speech chop chop button, remove this, do watch page dot shop button dot click and the browser will remain same and the URL will also remain same. Okay. So to run a test, I'm going to quickly go update this to watches.js and then now let's try to run a test to see if it works. Okay, so our test ran and as expected, they all passed. So if you see, I know I went over this really quickly because we already kind of did the same thing with our search.js file. But basically all we did was if I go back to watches page moved all of our selectors here exported our file then imported them over here and then just updated all our selectors move uh, remove the selectors and added our method here and then just wherever we had the reference we updated it by calling our watches page and using watches page we are calling whatever we want to call it just promo banner info title or shop button so that's all we needed to implement page object model in our test so to quickly recap, we created our pages file and we moved all of our selectors into those specific pages, which we then reused in our test. And from there, we also created a method to open our page and also use that in our test, which is using watchespages.open. So try to implement page object pattern on your own and let me know in the comments below if you think it's easy to implement or if you had some challenges with that. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. That's it for this video folks, I will see you in the next one.